Hey there, I'm Shane Ogla from the Rogue Traders. It's April 26th, and this is the weekly Rogue Trader trading update. Uh, so it's interesting because there's not a lot to talk about in terms of market movement. A little bit of action uh, since last week, but we're post-having. The halving is finished now uh, for Bitcoin, and we're entering into some new eras. Now, uh, I'm not going to get into those details because this is the trading summary, but nothing has really changed with our overall strategy. And we're long-term bullish. We want to accumulate more Bitcoin. Now, that's not to say there can't be big corrections or things can happen. Yeah, who knows, right? It's, it's trading. Anything can happen. But let's take a quick look at the charts and go through the summary. So, uh, you know, hey, despite, yes, yes, we had, we had a little bit of weakness uh, last week. We, we wicked down, a, a, you know, everybody's getting a bit freaked out. <clears throat> at the end of the day, we had a rally back up to 67, close to 68, and we're right smack in the middle of the channel. We're in the channel. Nothing has changed. Low 70s, low 60s, that's it. Now, one of the interesting things is, is here, let me add an overlay here. Uh, I add the Bitcoin or the, the, the Deribit volatility Devol, the, the index. And basically, this is a 30 day average of volatility. And it's plummeted, absolutely plummeted. And when it started coming down, especially down here, some people were asking me, saying, Well, hey, Shane, does this mean the price of Bitcoin is going to go down? Not necessarily. It might just mean we're going to go sideways. I mean, take a look at some of these. I mean, this is a massive move down. Look at this. You know, from the beginning of 2024 down to February, big move down. What the price do? It came off a little bit, but actually it held that kind of range, didn't it? And then it started to move up when volatility expanded. Now, in traditional markets, you know, if I'm trading the S&P or I'm trading a stock, if the price of the stock goes up, volatility drops, typically, normally, usually, okay. Bitcoin's the opposite. Price goes up, volatility goes up. Uh, price goes down, volatility softens. Now, sometimes it can go down, but it softens. So, Let's say this continues down and we go down another 10, 20 percent down volatility. Is it going to be enough to drag this down through this support that it's bounced off one, two, three, sort of four times? Maybe. Maybe not. I'm more inclined to think we're probably going to channel sideways for a while. OK, again, caveat, anything can happen. But I wouldn't be surprised if we did that. Uh, if these other news events or, or whatever was happening at the time couldn't bust it down, will it? No, this coupled with all ETF inflows drying up, uh, you know, the, the, the Hong Kong ETFs, you know, being sort of a dud or, you know, sure, maybe we come down. Maybe the real price of Bitcoin is 45000 I don't know, right? But um, if you watched our last week's Darabit Live or, sorry, yesterday's Darabit Live, uh, we talked about uh, – the Chinese uh, currency devaluation, talk about capital controls. And every time those are instituted, it sparked a Bitcoin rally because people in mainland China, there's a wall of money. They don't have anywhere to put their money. So they're, they're buying gold. Can't take gold across the border. They're trying to get into Bitcoin. Now, I know it's difficult for them to do that, but they find a way, right? This is often what leads to these big rallies. Sparks these rallies. Could Bitcoin double in the next six months or a year? Well, sure, sure it could. It might also get cut in half, but I'm betting on, on, on the on the former. So, uh, again, I'm not going to bet the farm on it. I'm going to trade it cautiously. I recognize this could break. We might temporarily come down. We might go back up. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? It's trading. But that's what I'm looking at. I'm not tra changing my strategy at all. Right now, I'm going to trade this as an asset that's in a channel. I'll be selling spreads on this side of the channel. I'll be selling spreads on this side of the channel until the channel breaks. Simple as that. So we just want to accumulate more and more Bitcoin as we go. Now, speaking of accumulating Bitcoin, I'll share with you here. Let me get rid of this. I'll share with you the uh, uh, the date, the update. So here, uh, I'll make, make this big so you can see it easier. You should be able to. Uh, hello. Hello. Oh, I see. Oh, my God. My mistake. It's set up as a uh, as a slide presentation, but I wanted to make it bigger. So this is for, this is the, the data we presented yesterday on our Deribit Live. Look, so we set this up eight weeks ago yesterday. We started off with 0 0.0825. 
Uh, as of yesterday, we uh, had 0. 0.1105 down a little bit, down point, you know, 0. 0.0001 from the week before. Uh, equity up. Uh, let's see, 31% increase from the start. That's that's the kind of number I want to talk about. So we basically mined 0. 0.026 of a Bitcoin since we started this eight weeks ago. And this account was worth about 5,000. Uh, this this isn't right. We started off with, I think it was 5,200, but whatever, it doesn't matter. So, you know, it, USD cash, that's going to fluctuate as the price of Bitcoin moves up and down. But our, our whole goal here is to beat the miners, right? This account is a synthetic mining account. Instead of buying all this mining equipment and electricity and doing all that crap. We just want to see if we can do the same thing with options and beat the miners. So we're up 31% uh, in the amount of Bitcoin that we have. So we have 31% more Bitcoin than we started with. Uh, so if we annualize that, now this and this number is going to fluctuate wildly. It might go down to 100. It might go up to 2,000, right? But it's going to, you know, the more data points, the more you know that graph will smooth out. But you know, five hundred fifty percent. If we annualize that return, that's ridiculously right, incredible. And the, here's the interesting thing: is if we hodled, so basically, if we just held that Bitcoin, that we, if we bought Bitcoin just like we did eight weeks ago yesterday, we bought Bitcoin. If we just held that, we'd be down eight point seven percent. So we're up a hell of a lot more. And you know, what? cost of mining is half an hour per week i'd say that's being generous i don't think we spend that much time on it but that's what we do so let's take a quick look at that synth mining account shall we and just see what's going on over there yeah just for a quick little update here you can see look we got uh, 0.1092 we started off with 0.0825 uh, right now, we're only using 12% margin. And in fact, I want Richard to create a Python script for me because I want some other data before I lay some things on. But, uh, you know, we don't even have much going on. You know, a little tiny account. We're putting on hardly any risk using only 12% margin. Uh, everything went out this morning, expired out this morning. We've got a little bit of positions on uh, next Friday, May 3rd, 62,000. If I have to adjust it, I will. 60,000 on May 10th. Now, I will show you just for... You know, anyone who wants to see, there's the volatility index have been really coming off. And if we also want to look at the volatility surface, I mean, it's looking pretty flat, looking pretty normal, right? No big skews, no big expectations for the markets. Anything. Sure, the short dated, you know, but these are you know, everything on the front of the smile here is just. You know, people panicking for me. It's just short-term sentiments. It's, it's sort of noise. It's meaningless. You can you can jump on those and and trade them, and I do sometimes uh, in other accounts, not this account. But look, you know, our curve is looking pretty smooth, as always with Bitcoin. There's always a sentiment on the call side. These longer dated calls, as we get six months to a year out, there's always a skew on that side. So meaning those options will be more expensive for calls than they are for puts those longer data because people expect the price to appreciate. So that's it for that account. The other account is the road trader account, which is on the rehabilitation program because it was left my fault. It was left and uh, it had some, some bad stuff happening and I didn't get to it because I have big accounts to manage and I just, it wasn't a big enough account my bad. I check on this account now every day and it was down to 0 0.02 something week it was gross it was horrible so i've got an almost 40 percent increase in about two weeks uh, i'm quite happy with that it's on the it's on the diet what i'm doing is i'm bringing in sort of what have i got coming out tomorrow i've got some sixty-two thousand short puts you know can we go down if i have to adjust my will i got a little bit of calls the day after that on sunday sixty-seven thousand five hundred. then we got may 3rd i don't have a lot left out here anymore i've got some calls most of them up in the 70s. Again, if I have to adjust in my will, I've got cover on everything. You know, there's nothing much for me to 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 do there. What I'm doing at that account is I've got it on the brat diet. I'm not putting on any extra risk. I've got the margin down. I was fighting with margin all the time. There was too much risk on that small account. Got overtraded a little bit. Got into, got some stuff that went into the money. Gave me some margin problems. So I had to solve all those problems. However, I kind of like the fact that I got beaten up a little bit on this account because, let's face it, most people get beaten up on accounts at some time in their life. It's nice to see how you can recover an account slowly and methodically and get that back up, whether it's going to take me three more weeks or two months. I don't know, right? We're just going to see what the market does. 
but I'm going to be more selective in applying risk. So I'm not going to manage it as a book because of the small options account. It's so it, it's more challenging to, uh, to, um, to manage it as a book. I'm going to trade it a little bit more positionally. Of course, there'll be the book aspect to it, but it's going to be more positionally. That way I'll reserve margin fire, fire, firing power for when things happen. If, you know, Bitcoin decides it wants to take a 20% move down and scare the pants off of everybody, volumes, you know, go through the roof and, 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 and IV expands. I want to be able to jump on those opportunities versus managing risk and constantly having to move risk around. Again, you've got a really big account. It's easy to do that because a big account's like the blob. If you remember the horror movie, the blob is this blob. It absorbs everything, right? Will there be drawdowns? Yes, but it's it's muted because you've got all kinds of wing protection. You've got you know the price is going down. You've got, you're selling calls and you're you're you 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 bring the delta uh, more in line. Blah blah blah. All these trading terms. The point is, is if I put on a position, if I've got a big account and I put on a spread, I come back in two weeks and I look at that. I'm like. Was that a spread I put on there? I, I have no idea. I've got so many. You've got hundreds and hundreds of positions, right? You manage it as a book, and that's when you have to pay attention to your metrics, your Greeks, your Vega risk, your gamma risk. What's your theta? What's your delta? You need to be watching all those things, uh, and that's not where most people start. You know, they want to trade positionally. You know, they think it's going up. Okay, let's do some synthetic covered calls. Let's do some 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 long spreads, some one by twos, or directional butterflies, or you know, whatever, whatever, whatever level you're at. That's fine. That's what we help people with uh, in our coaching programs, in our course, and in our live streams. But for those people just starting, it's better just to keep it simple. Keep the risks extremely limited. So if you have to manage that simple position, you're just managing that position. You're not worrying about the Greeks or those metrics. So that's my little spiel for today, my soapbox on there. But, hey, everything's going pretty steady, Eddie. Vols are really coming off. And, in fact, we're in that level now where I think DVOL is at, uh, at, uh, it's at 55 right now. I don't want to sell a lot of risk in low vol. Because if you sell low vol and it goes to high vol, it's very, very painful, right? So I don't want to do that. So I'm happy to wait. And again, if we get one, two, three weeks down the road, we're still in this channel. That means vols will continue to get crushed. I'll start to look for long vol opportunities. Okay, that's not 90% of the time I'm selling vol. 10% of the time I'm buying vol, and that would be one of those times. But let's see what uh, what next week what next week brings. I don't expect much to happen over the weekend. Yeah, it can happen. It's trading. But uh, let's just see how it goes, and we'll catch you next week.